What's up guys? Here with uh, a remake video and I, I don't think I've made a remake video before or I haven't done a remake video before but uh, I was just checking out some of my older videos and I saw one that I titled Mountaineering Everyday Carry which was a video I made at least like three or four years ago now. You know, I just do things a, a bit differently now. Not hugely different, but just slightly different for when I'm on Baker or anything like that. And so I wanted to just make a new video that is more or less an update of what I've changed. Just small changes here and there uh, for a non-technical ascent of Mount Baker. Something like Coleman Deming, Easton. Could be Disappointment, Cleave Armory Near, one of those things. Um, where you're just uh, hiking up a volcano. So just prepared for if someone in your party falls in a crevasse, uh, this is what I tend to bring. And then I'm also going to add in the same kit that I bring for more technical ascents. So first things first is I'm going to have a specialty locker with me. I just got this one because it kind of checks all the boxes of my specifications I want, but it's a captured eye triple action locking carabiner. Uh, and this is the one that I clip into my belay loop right here. So that way it's ready to go while I'm in glacier travel mode. I do have a full video on this subject that talks about why that carabiner is acceptable to be used on its own. I'll have a link in the description if you want to check that one out. It's like 11 minutes of me talking about it. So uh, I'm not going to bore you with that in this video. So one thing I have changed in my last video, I used to bring two bundles of cord with me now I only tend to bring one and that's um, because I've sort of switched out one bundle of cord for a longer sling but this is um, well this is actually 5.5 tech cord by sterling uh, I think this is about 22 feet or so this tech cord stuff is like really hard to cut on its own so just buy the packages that they sell of I think it's like 22 feet of cord and since it's a little bit smaller, it packs down pretty good. Uh, but this is a bit more abrasion resistant and stronger, obviously. You know, it's about the same strength of like seven mil cord, only in a smaller package. So that's really nice. I just bring one bundle of cord now, 18 to 22 feet long. Other slings. So here is a triple link sling and here is a double link sling. They're both Dyneema. One is, uh, this one's Mammut, this one's Petzl. And so these are, this main sling right here is what I've switched out my second bundle of cord for. And um, ultimately in my full on crevasse rescue set, I don't actually tend to use this all that much. Uh, maybe it'll be equalizing two pieces of anchor material together, uh, but I do tend to use the cord more for that. So it is a bit of an extra piece in my personal systems that I like to use. So. Um, it's there if I need it and I can use it for plenty of other things rather than just crevasse rescue. The double link sling we all know has many uses. My final piece of soft goods right here is my hollow block. Um, you can also substitute this out for six mil cord tied in a loop. Uh, and then this is repel backups. Uh, I'll also use this an awful lot when I'm on more technical glaciers or uh, late season when you have to sort of Anytime you're really shortening or lengthening, messing around with the distance of rope between you and the next person down the rope line, there could be any number of reasons for it, but I'll tie this in a prusik and attach it to my waist a lot in those cases. So that's what I use this one mainly for. And then obviously it'll come in handy for whatever crevasse rescue you want. I also have, if I just switch this around, also bring the trusty tie block or T block or whatever. And um, we all know what this is for. It's mainly for uh, attaching to the rope for your three to one, six to one, whatever you want to use to haul people out of a hole. And I'll carry both of those on one non-locker. In the past few years, I just changed this now. I brought four non-lockers and their main job has been to hold stuff on my harness. <laughs> so now I've dimmed that down to three non-lockers uh, because my pickets, I always have a non-locker on a picket that I can use. And then if I'm bringing ice screws out for an anchor, whatever amount of ice screws, one, two, four, um, I just rack my ice screws on non-lockers on my harness. I don't really use ice clippers. I don't really tend to use ice clippers for mountaineering because they just hang there anyway. And ice clippers are really annoying with like a backpack waist belt. So 
Um, if I bring more gear, I'll have more non-lockers with me. Really, I'm just using these for mostly just holding stuff onto my harness. So go along with that tie block. I have a dedicated locker right here for my progress capture pulley. Um, and in this case, I chose the Nano Traction, which is the one smaller than the Micro. You know, it's the smallest one they make. And the reason why I've chosen this is because I'm only carrying it for hauling someone out of a crevasse or maybe even sliding on the rope, ascending out of a rope. So I'm really only going to use it with the teeth engaged. On more technical alpine missions, I'll bring the micro traction because I can lock the teeth in place. So that's a nice feature I like to have. Since I'm just on Mount Baker, um, I'll use the nano traction connected to uh, a locking carabiner of some sort. I don't really care exactly what type of locker, but I happen to choose the Petzl double action right there. Another thing that's pretty much on my harness all the time is an ATC type device. This one's a bit more burly than I would choose for Baker. Um, I mean, like, your ATC is your ATC. Uh, but what I mean by that is I would probably use an ATC that matches the rope I'm using. If I climb the Coleman Deming up Baker, I'm probably going to be using, like, a half rope. So something in the 8 mil range, and I'll pair up, uh, I'll use, like, an ATC that's more made for half ropes. That's the only difference. Um, and even then, if I'm in a pinch, I'll just bring this out, you know. But uh, I don't really rack this on its own locker or even its own carabiner. I'll just clip it onto one of the non-lockers that already racks something else on my harness. All right, the final thing that I bring with me is the most versatile tool you can possibly have in the mountains, aside from your rope, compact HMS locking carabiners. And I actually have two different ones here, just because it's what I have. Petzl Attaché is a classic one. This one's a, kind of a newer carabiner I'm messing around with. These are the DMM Phantom something something. They are actually a little bit smaller than the Attaché, which is kind of neat. Yeah, just these single action locking carabiners, and I bring three of those. I use these in everything, right? Like the match to point locker. I use them in a locker on my harness for a clove hitch, backing up the system, keeping myself safe. Uh, if I do do that technique of putting the prusik between me and the other people on the rope just to like mess around with the rope as we're moving on a glacier i'll use a separate locker instead of the locker i'm clipped in with the rope so these things are just really useful as well as just munter hitches if i do have to use the atc on my harness for whatever reason i got two lockers uh, that i can use in guide mode even early season on like the north side of baker um, where we have a bit of steeper slopes it's not uncommon for us to have to do one or two snow pitches at specific parts and uh, that's when, again, your lockers would be very useful. So um, what I, my whole plan with it is I just keep those three lockers separate from everything. I use the non-lockers to hold all the equipment. So that way the three lockers can be free for me to do whatever I want with. It's a very versatile tool. So there you have it. You know, it's my mountaineering harness. Um, this is the Petzl Altitude checks my boxes you know it has a belay loop right here you can put it on take it off without actually stepping through the harness it's overall a good harness so this right here would be an example of a slightly different crevasse rescue kit i carry with me i usually prefer this to be on an oval carabiner but i'm just sort of working with what i got the oval is nice because it has a big basket for all this stuff to pull into and you can still open up the gate easily but you can see i have a double length sling uh third hand type material and then my micro or nano traction and a tie block uh, there are times where even while well, i'll leave the tie block behind and keep just the traction with me you know just depending on the objective but more often than not that thing is there and i'll clip the nano like this with just the uh the thin plate right there to help it nest on the carabiner easier but this is what i'd like to call i guess my uh, technical crevasse rescue kit or my good to go crevasse kit and uh, it basically relies on me carrying a bunch of other gear with it so this is what I would bring for like Westridge or Forbidden or anything in the North Cascades Fisher Chimneys on Chuckson um, because it gives me all the crevasse rescue objects mainly these two things the tie block and the micro traction um, and it's all consolidated on one carabiner 
because when I'm on those routes, I'll have at least like a few cams with me, maybe three, most of the time, five cams, which give me non lockers I can use. I'll also often carry like um, one or two Alpine draw, Alpine draws. They're broken down to just carabiner and carabiner and the sling between, but uh, I mean, that's basic materials right there. So I have all the carabiners I need to work with. I'll carry five locking carabiners that are all those same HMS pair style carabiners. So instead of just bringing three, I'll have five with me. And so um, it's just overall, it's more equipment to work with to do whatever you need to pull someone out of a crevasse. But this also is just such a small package and it can sit on the back of my harness and be out of the way while I have all the other crap dangling around on me. So that's what I like to do, just a little compact thing. And then in general, you know, we have to repel at some point during these routes. And so I have my repel extension and backup right there and um, I'm good to go. I will also always have a ATC on those sort of routes. So five lockers, one ATC, and this kit, along with whatever else I have with me, could be a bunch of ice screws and quick draws if it's more Alpine ice, or it could be a bunch of cams. All that stuff I can use to actually pull someone out of a crevasse. Almost forgot to mention, along with those five lockers and then that little kit right there, I will still bring a longer sling and a piece of cord with me. Uh, which can be used for crevasse rescue. They can also be used to build a large, robust anchor if need be. So um, the, all those things are included in my crevasse rescue kit, but uh, I have the option to grab carabiners off of cams or whatever. So thanks guys for watching. Uh, leave a comment. I'm sure you guys all have different crevasse rescue setups that you like to do and whatever other gear you like to bring out with you. I can make more videos adding on to those sort of things, but they're a bit more situational, you know, they're a bit more like early season versus late season versus middle season. Um, and also uh, other, you know, route variations, like what route I'm climbing. Whereas everything I showed you today is kind of like what I'll have with me pretty much every time. So thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Here's a fun little tag for the end of the video I want to show you guys. I was just cleaning out my storage unit and in that unit I found not one, not two, but three of the same sleeping pad. <laughs> and these are all from different years. I just dropped one, but these are all from different years and they all have slow leaks with them. So um, I just... I went through all last summer with a slow leak sleeping pad. And so it was just kind of common where if I was sleeping on snow, I'd have to like wake up at 2 a.m. and blow more air into it. So yeah, I didn't know I had three of the exact same Neo Air X-Lite Thermarest pads. They all have slow leaks. So my new goal is to blow them all up and see which one leaks the least. And uh, maybe I'll use that one for this year. Or you could hit that subscribe button and help me buy some new gear that doesn't leak. So keep that in mind.